All right, so exponential equations with unrelated bases. Unrelated bases, let's make sure we know what that means because we alluded to that when we looked at the first tutorial, which was exponential equations with related bases. Exponential equations with related bases, if we skip back there, was things like what we just had there. Things where the bases are powers of one another, one's a power of the other, or they're powers of a common whole number. Four and eight are both powers of two. Five and then whatever that is divided by three. 625 and five are both powers of five. Three and 27. Okay, those are related bases. One sixteenth and eight are both powers of two. You can write both sides as powers of two. But most equations that you would come up with if you made one up at random wouldn't be that. They'd be numbers like 2 and 43 or, or whatever. Numbers that you can't write as powers of one another, one power of the other. If you want to solve this, now that you know something about logarithms, you can solve this. This is an exponential uh, expression on this left side. It's an exponential equation because it has this exponential expression on this side. First thing, I do want you to estimate the answer so we know what we're doing when you're asked to solve this. So we're going to solve this equation, but first I want you to just try playing around, testing, just do experiment with numbers until you come up with approximately what the answer is to even just one decimal place is good. Try and zero on it using your calculator just by trial and error. Can you do that right now? I'm going to pause this, try doing that, okay? You might not be able to actually... Solve it algebraically after using the hint if you haven't seen it before, but try, okay? Estimate, then try doing this using that strategy there, and you'll see why it'll work. What's the answer have to be between? X has to be between what? Has to be between, if it was 6, 2 to the 6th is 64, 2 to the 5th is 32. It's got to be between those two values, right? If you played around with the calculator, I'm sure you could come up with it. Five point, I don't know, five point five, five point four. If you want to solve it algebraically, the way that we can do it is if you have an exponential equation here, two to the x is forty three. If you have an exponential equation to get at this exponent, because it's small here and you want to make it big so you can isolate it, you can't isolate it until it's big. You have to do what to both sides? What might you do? Any suggestions? <laughs> take, oh, yeah, take the log base 10 of each side and then use logarithm laws. I think if I had asked you that without the hint there, that wouldn't be the hint that, or that wouldn't be what you suggested. You would suggest something else. You might come up with use logarithms, but you probably wouldn't say use base 10 logarithms. What might you say? Base 2, right? You could do base 2 logarithms. You could say, like if you did base 2 logarithms, you'd have log base 2 of this side equals log base 2 of this side. but so And that would work nicely because what would happen over on the left side here? This would cancel and you just have x, except what would we do with this? Log base 2, 43. That's a true statement. It's true. It's just that do we have this function on our calculator? We don't, right? You don't have that function on your calculator, so... That's not going to lead to the answer. You're going to learn something later on that will let you get from there to the answer, but right now we don't uh, we don't have that knowledge. So I would say for now this is probably not the best way to do it. What you, what you can do is the reason that you're going to do log base 10 of both sides because you have that on the calculator. It's not going to be any harder, and you're going to see why it works here. So you have 2 to the x equals 43. If you take the log base 10 of both sides, which I'll write in red here, log, log. If there's no base written down, it's assumed that it's log base 10. If anyone, I'm kind of picky about lining up those equal signs. Better not do show bad habits here. Now, what can you do with that? Because that doesn't, I, I can't just cancel log base 10 and 2 to the power of. But I could do something with this side here, given our newfound knowledge of logarithm laws. What can I do? What's that? X times log 2, right? Because remember, th there's this rule that is uh, this thing can. 
go in front here, right? That can go in front, that exponent. Log 2 to the x is the same as x times log 2, which you just write x times log 2. Log 2, x, I know that when you write it with numbers in grade 8, 3x means 3 times x. For some reason, when you have when the number happens to be a logarithm, log 2 is just a number, you put it after. Grade 8 sometimes write this, x3, and we have to tell them, no, well, that's not what mathematicians do. They, they write the number first. But now you have to get used to it the other way around, right? Grade 8s would, if they knew that log 2 was a number, they would probably want to put it there, log 2 times x. But why would that be confusing? Why can't we do it that way? Or why is it a bad, why would it be a bad idea to do that? Yeah, then it would look like this, right? It's not that. It's log 2 times x. You could do this, but what people do is they just put the x first to make it easier. Okay, so they put log 2 after it. x log 2 means x times log 2. Oops. That's no good. What's up? Um, graphing calculators? I don't have... Oh, yeah. I don't have a whole bunch of them, but... They're in there somewhere. Probably the other side. Um, whoops. Keep color coordinated here. Log 43. Now, how wide is that going to work? How's that going to work here? How can we get what x is by itself? Remember that this is an... This, yeah, just divide both sides by log 2. So you're going to have x is... Uh, I guess we should show this. The grade 8s would show it like this, right? They obviously don't know anything about logarithms. But they would say, I'm going to divide both sides by log 2. You don't need to write that step if you don't want. You can just right away say, um, you, you, you can. I mean, I often do, but you don't have to. You can just write log 43 divided by log of 2. And it's going to give you the number that you're looking for. If you try that... Whatever your estimate was before, like 5.4, whatever it was, if you do this, it'll give you the exact answer. Well, it'll give you a pretty good approximation. I am out of room, so I'm going to do this. 5.426. 5. 5. what? I should do it on my calculator here, eh? I appreciate that. Uh, but I should do it on here. No, actually, I should do it on here to show you. Make sure you don't just push the buttons without thinking about what you're doing. If you just think in your head, log 43 divided by log 2, what's going to be the problem I run into there? No yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do 43 divided by log 2, then do the logarithm of that. So you, you need to make sure you're closing the brackets on this. Log 43 divided by log 2. That's the number that you were approximating before. Okay. That's the number you were approximating before, 5.426, whatever. If I do 2 to the power of that number, if I put it in approximately here, 42626, six, what is that going to give me, roughly? 43. Yeah, 43, right, the other side. If I, if I put in the whole thing, if I put in 2 to the power of the answer, it would give it more accurately, but... That's what you're looking for there. So you can say x is equal to log 43 divided by log 2, or it's roughly equal to 5.42, what was it, 426. That is solving, that's, that's solving simple ones using logarithms. Okay, we're going to solve some more complex ones. Remember that when we did... Uh, exponential equations with related bases. We had the simple ones where the x was only in one place, and we had the slightly more complicated ones where x was in more than one place on both sides. It's going to make even more of a difference here. So that's that's a couple of the simple ones here. You might want to uh, put something down just in general about the steps you went through there. You might want to solve this using that same strategy right now, and then we're going to look at this one together. Okay? Try problem two. When you get an answer, check it. See if it's right. And then we're going to try the difficult one. Well, once you know how to do it, it's not difficult. But you could get started the same way we did here. And you can maybe tell me why it's difficult. 